Part 2 on inductive arguments. What we noticed is that one telltale sign of an inductive argument is that it goes from specific to general, where the conclusion generalizes over more instances than are mentioned in the premises. Well, one problem with this situation, if you want to call it a problem and not just a reality of life, is that we can never really be certain about the conclusion when we make generalizations in this manner. But the issue of certainty goes a lot deeper than this. I actually lied when I said that the definition of an inductive argument is that it goes from specific to general. In fact, that's only part of the definition because there are two types of inductive arguments. This means that there are two telltale signs of an inductive argument. Either the argument goes from specific to general, where general in the conclusion generalizes over more instances than you can find in the premises, or the conclusion is not certain given the truth of the premises. And I repeat, given the truth of the premises. Why am I repeating this and emphasizing such a trivial, seemingly trivial point? The point is that in order to determine whether a conclusion um, can be deemed as certain or not, and whether an argument is inductive or not, depends entirely on a test that you need to perform. You look at the premises and assume that they are true. doesn't matter if they're not. We make the assumption for the purpose of argument that they're true. If, given the truth of those premises, the conclusion is still not 100% certain or probable, then we have an inductive argument on our hands. It doesn't matter how probable it is, as long as it falls short of 100% or a probability of 1, as we call it. So the sun rose today, it rose the day before, rose the day before that, need I go on? Hence the sun will rise tomorrow. Well, guess what? Any rational person, obviously, is going to conclude that the sun will rise tomorrow. But rational people believe a lot of things that aren't certain. For instance, I asked my friends to meet me here at 8 p.m. tonight. Of course, I'm concluding that they will be here around 8 p.m., but that doesn't mean it's certain. It's merely highly probable, I guess, depending on your friends, right? But that notion of probability is inherent in the definition of our second type of inductive arguments, which have to do with the lack of certainty and not with the notion of making claims that are specific and then concluding about generalizations. So just remember, there are two types of inductive arguments, and this is how you're going to be able to spot them. Either the argument makes claims going from specific to very general, or the argument has a conclusion that's only highly probable given the truth of the premises. And remember, the sun will rise tomorrow, I have no doubt. But that is still only highly probable and not certain. Anything catastrophic can happen tomorrow. Well, maybe not anything, but something catastrophic could happen to prevent that from happening. Does that mean that the conclusion is one we shouldn't believe? No. The conclusion is very highly probable. But because there is that slight margin for error, the argument is defined as inductive and not deductive.